things, doesn't it? Yep. Okay. Heard anything? I haven't heard anything from him, so let's see. I haven't heard him from him since last weekend. I don't know. It's not coming up on, on Facebook. It's not coming up, you say? <laughs> Shown here. It's showing okay there. I'm fixing to pull it up. I saw the. Yep. here this morning and uh, I've had a long couple couple of weeks with um, Patty's mother my mother-in-law passed away across the veil and um, so we had all of that going on and then my brother came the day after all my family was here from Virginia and different places, and he made it in. Um, so they stayed a few days, so we've had a good week and a half of a lot going on. But um, we've been talking about the uh, angelic atmosphere and movement within Aquarius and... Um, We've been talking about Aquarius and the changes, and I'm sorry, I will get those notes out right away, but it kind of showed us the uh, the whole view of how we entered into Aquarius, um, the world, meaning the earth, the universe, all these things, the sun, everything entered into Aquarius around 2011 but we as a people coming out of the Piscean Age into the Aquarius Age um, at the opening of those seals it gave us a pattern and a prelude and how that we moved into Aquarius and so we had about 50 years of transition um, coming to Aquarius and so we've been about nine or ten years with everything um, entering in through the into the house of Aquarius so we um, we took and showed how politics and religion and spirituality and the world and all things <coughs> Um, had their time to move into Aquarius but it has it has all happened now we are in Aquarius the world the governments 
the politics, the religion, the uh, the spirituality. Um, we are in Aquarius. I'm going to pull this up here just so I can kind of watch it and make sure it's going to rain okay. So we're going to talk this morning a little bit on the reflexation of the angelic room. The angelic room being your throne room. William Branham had some things to say about it. Um, when he he had a vision and the best that he could tell the vision about the vision was that he was going to set up a tent and have a little wooden building in the tent a little small room and he would uh, go in there and the angel of the Lord would meet him there and he would have people come through individually rather than do it in a big crowd and um, they the hearts would be revealed the sick would be healed everything would go on in that little room and um, he told some things he saw about it and how that when people entered the little room he said they would come in on crutches they would come in in wheelchairs they would come in crippled up diseased all kinds of things wrong with them and he said when they go out um, they would throw their crutches away and and throw their get rid of their wheelchairs and so they came out healed and he said um, the people on the on the end where they came out healed would say you know what what happened in there and he said they really couldn't explain or tell exactly what happened in that little room but they were able to say everything's different I mean you can see that so we um, we were talking about that angelic atmosphere and if you remember there were four angels within the scriptures and there there these four angels I was talking about how they are atmospheric natures that we all use their attributes in us Gabriel Michael um, Wormwood Lucifer they're all attributes in us and we talked a lot over the last few messages about how those attributes come out how the prophets seen those attributes and how they help us and how each one of those are an attribute inside us and we enter that attribute in the third pole or as needed. William Branham said the third pole would operate as needed. And um, so this morning I was thinking about, if you remember, it's probably been two years ago maybe, I took a little thought on reflexation. And I said it's, it's, not, re it's not reflexes. It's not... Uh, trying to mirror something but reflexation is when you go through an experience or when you are going through an experience and you begin to take all of the collective experience and all the things that happened in the reflexation or in the experience you're going through you take all of it in and you begin to use your reflexation and you begin to say you know I learned a lot through here and you would use reflexation to say how am I going to make this better how am I going to um, by not comparing yourself to anything around you um, just compare yourself to yourself take a good look at yourself and say I'm not trying to up someone else I'm not trying to be better than someone else I'm not trying to be further than someone else I'm just trying to keep moving beyond myself and becoming better and better all the time so that's reflexation is taking what happens and taking the learning experience out of it and saying you know 
we can make this better. Here's how we can do this. It's it's kind of the whole process of it's the whole process of the devil. It's the whole process of the red dragon. It's a way to make things better. It's a process you come through and because you're going through the details um, you the two blades don't look anything like the the wheat hanging in the harvest nor does the stalk nor the 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 tassel the husk all these things are processes and as nature moves through its process it reflexes mm -hmm. it it understands what it's doing and the things that are happening and it reflexes and moves to the next stage so that's kind of what I'm looking at today the reflexation of the angelic room where do we move from here how do we uh, how do we I guess a good way to put it is how do we keep the biases off of us how do we keep the prejudices out of our thinking how do we how do we um, rid ourselves of racism and judgment and how do we <clears throat> how do we get off of a scale of good and evil that's a scale that has been ran through the world for thousands upon thousands and thousands of years and in the Aquarian age we are not supposed to have that scale anymore we're not supposed to we're not supposed to try to look at something as good and say oh gee I want that and look at something as evil and say oh I don't want that and this over here is Christian and this over here is atheist and this over here is is sweet and this over here is bitter and this over here is righteousness and this thing over here is sin and um, so you have to watch yourself or you'd stay on the same scale mm -hmm. when you're not supposed to stay on the same scale you're supposed to move into something beyond all that so the reflexation of the angelic room is something you should be going through every day it's not something that you say you know I'll reflect on this I'll ref I'll use my reflexation and and then uh, it doesn't take you anywhere so I want to read a, a scripture and um, in Revelations 22 and 8 it says and I John saw these things and heard them this John the Revelator talking and he's written the book of Revelation he's coming down to the uh, to the finishing remarks of his writings and I John saw these things and heard them and when I heard and seen I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things so John is is going to worship the angel that was revealing all these things to him then saith he unto me the angel see thou do it not it's not a time of worship see thou do it not we've moved on from this for I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren the prophets and of them which keep the sayings of this book worship God that's exactly right if you're gonna worship something <clears throat> pick something out in uh, that you think is it that is superior to you and uh, live in that age if you want to but don't do it this is not the time this is what he's saying and he said unto me seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book for the time is at hand so this is not a time for this to be uh, sealed up it's a time to open things it's a time to understand things just bring her in Patty and that way you don't have to worry about her
It just takes your mind away from what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. And so he said, don't seal the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Open it up now. Understand it. Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of the book. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. So now we come to a point when the prophecies are all opened up, when these things come to understanding, we come to a point to where he says, let the just be just and let the unjust be unjust. Let the filthy be filthy and let the righteous be righteous. How do you come to that point? After thousands of years of trying to make the unjust just and trying to make the filthy righteous, trying to make the false vine the true vine, that was our, our thinking, trying to take the sin away from us, trying to convert us and save us. But then when the seals open, and William Branham said it in Souls in Prison now, he said, he said, you know, it's over. In the breach, he said, there's the redemption plan is finished. So when you come to this time of, of opening up and unsealing things, just things are going to be just and unjust. You know why? Because your thinking is going to change to where that all of the seals were in you. All of the things that happened were in you. All of the opening of these things are all about you. And so when we come to that point, we realize that I am righteous and I am just and I am filthy and I am unjust. And like one person wrote, I can't remember who wrote it now, Brother Esmo, I think he said, just leave your history alone. Your history is what brought you all the way up through. And when you start trying to taint and paint your history as a different picture, it's not your history. And you're not going to be able to grow off of it when you do things like that. Leave your history alone. Whatever happened to you, it happened to you. And you grow off of that. And there's going to be parts of you that when you look at it, it's unjust. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be parts of you when you look at it, it's just but move beyond that concept of righteous, unrighteous, filthy, uh, clean, just, unjust, good, evil. Move beyond that consciousness of that and then let the unjust parts be unjust. Don't try to make it look like it, that uh, you know, it's, it's not an unjust thing. It is. The, uh, let, let me give you an example of what I'm trying to say and, and the whole confederacy thing uh, the whole slavery thing all of those things that are, that are happening around us and I'm using it because it's all happening and it's real they're tearing down all the statues they're, they're tearing statues down all over the world England and everywhere else that had anything to do with history and if you remember They'd done that in Germany. They'd done that in, in, in many places, in Italy and, and all over the place. Whenever somebody or some atmosphere changes, they say, oh, that's no good. Let's tear it all down. Let's burn these flags. Let's do all this and that. And yes, it was unjust, but let it be unjust still. Let it be a part of our history. And if you're married three times or five times, or if, if, you, if you've done things that you know that have harmed people, your family split up, you've went through divorces, uh, your, your children don't like you, you're, 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 you got fired from, from jobs, just you went through all these things and you've done a lot of things that had to do with, with filthy and unjust and, and just, just let it be, it's your history. And just say to yourself, I'm using this as a collective memory and don't try to tear down all the statues and all the memories and all these things. Just be overjoyed with the revelation 
that's come to you and take all those things and and do a reflexation in your heart and look at it and say this is what made me and here's how I'm going to be a better person that's the angelic room that we move into when you walk into the room you're crippled you're angry you're hurt you're 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 full of things that are unjust you're full of things that when you walk into the room you're full of tradition and dogma and creed and and you're full of principle and you're full of past history you're full of all of these things when you walk into the room now when you walk into the room that doesn't take away your crippledness <laughs> you still have a history of it but when you walk out you're able to take that history and make it better and walk out of the room rather than being in a wheelchair walk out of the room with understanding rather than having a bunch of rules and regulations to go by walk out of the room in a new life and know for a fact of what was you on the other side of that room and embrace it make it yours and know who you are and know that it made you so this is what John is talking about at the opening of the revelation things are going to change and we're going to have a holistic view of the world of politics of religion of spirituality of the universe of our family you know I, I've got a little book that I I read it every once in a while because it helps me so much it's called please understand me Kersey and Bates I think were the authors of it but I read through that and I know what my family is and how they fit into that and I will read through it and I'm not trying to uh, make Joe Parnell into Don Parnell and that book of please understand me it, it really helps me to do that there's some little tests in it and things and and it helps me to to be a help with my children to be a guide with my children but not to be that dictator that ruler that that person that uh, says you gotta you gotta mold yourself into this or you're no good if you act like this you're filthy I don't do any of that to them I've said it before my children I never told them not to drink I never told them not to smoke I never told them what kind of clothes to wear I never told them any of those things but I put all of the information in front of them and I said if you do this according to the information here's probably the way things are going to turn out for you um, you know if you if you marry before you should and you end up in divorces you know there's alimony and there's child support and there's there's uh, you know possibility of getting thrown in jail and and courts and everything else and so think really hard about what you're doing before you marry that lady or that or that man whoever it might be and you know if you drink I put out the information there I said you know he, look at these people they they have this in their life and I'm not talking about a simple drink either I'm talking about if you drink you be you become an alcoholic or you become a addicted to smoking I would show Jess and Sherry pictures pictures of ladies you know when they're talking through their throat cause the cancer got rid of their mouth I would show them information of uh, you know those ladies that have smoked for so long their skin looks like leather they don't have any smoothness about them at all and no touch and no and and they I showed them interviews of how the lady said I don't have any taste left I don't have any smell I just put the information out there I didn't tell them don't go do this and by putting the information out there then I let them make their own decisions and I've seen them drink occasionally and I've seen them smoke occasionally and I've seen them get in fights occasionally I've seen them do all kinds of things occasionally but overall they turned out being very good children 
because they were able to decipher and take a good look at the information. And so that's what this age is about. This age is about leadership, not being a ruler, not being a, a dictator, not being, not being an oligarchy where a few men rule, not being, not being any of those things, but the leadership is being um, the atmospheric angels of Gabriel and Michael and Lucifer and Wormwood. The leadership is men and women who will bring the youth, the elderly, bring everybody up to an open door and say, here's the Aquarian age. Here's the door we're entering. Here's what it's about. I told you whole messages about the dark side of Aquarius. And I've told you whole messages about the light side of Aquarius. We've entered the door. That's, that's as far as I can take you. Now it's your choices. I can lay information out there. I can say, here's, here's the information. Here's what the Bible says about it. Here's what the prophets say about it. Here's what science says about it. Here's what politics says about it. And I lay all the information out there. But like Jamie Wesley said on one of the, one of the, the uh, fellowships we had, he said, once you got all that information, you create your own world. And if I see somebody creating a world that is going to be hectic, full of hell, full of all kinds of things for them, I've got enough compassion and love and sympathy that I want to try and maybe help them get the steering wheel back on the road. But that's all I can do. I can't make you do anything. I can't push you to believe anything. I don't want to. I don't want to do that. I want you to look at all this information and tap into the gap, into the reflexation inside of you. And when you tap into that, and you have that reflexation and you have that gap and you hear that voice move with it find that voice let all the other voices let all the other things just kind of die down and find that voice so this is what john is talking about we quickly listen to him he said he that is unjust let him be unjust still he that which is filthy let him be filthy still and he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly. When you do that and you open up to a holistic being of the universe and a holistic collective history of who you are and how you connect to everything like a web across the earth and the universe, when you open up to that holistic understanding behold I come quickly things begin to open to you all kinds of things begin to open and you get rid of false gods and you get rid of of, uh, of devils and you get rid of of angels floating around out there and you get rid of all your rules and regulations and and you move into an entirely new world of understanding and someone said, oh, Brother Parnell, that you, what you're trying to say, you're going to cause people to throw their morals away. You're going to cause people to be unholy. You're going to cause, I'm not causing people to be anything. I walk you to the door. I give you the information and you take the information. I haven't told one person how to dress. I haven't told one person how to act. I haven't told one person how to live. I haven't walked in one person's house and said, you should hang these pictures up and take these down. I haven't told anybody what kind of vehicle to buy. I haven't told you what land to buy. I don't care if you live homeless under a bridge. It doesn't matter to me. You take what you have, the information that you have, and you use it now. It's yours. It's the Aquarian age. And tap into the reflexation inside you. And wake up to the voice and the gap that is walking inside you. Behold, I come quickly when we catch this understanding. And my reward is with me. And there are great rewards to understanding this. While the whole world 
without this understanding, look at them. They're going crazy. Mm -hmm. they're, 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 you know, it's just amazing to me how we go from one day to the next and you think it'll settle down and, and it will. But there it is again and there it is again, all the things that are going on. And so his reward, the reward is living in peace. You say, yeah, but you don't live there. If I was living in Chicago right now, I'd feel just like I do right now. If I was living in Philadelphia, if I was living in Miami, Florida, if I was living in Los Angeles, I'd feel just like I do right now. Because my outside atmosphere is not what's affecting me. I now understand my voice. I understand my gap, whether I'm living in London, England, or if I'm living in Moscow, Russia, or wherever I'm living, with what I understand now, it would not affect me. Mm -hmm. I'd be the same. I would understand the same. I would love the same. I would pour out the same information. I would give you all these things, and I would say, you need to understand people. If, if I were living there and people were being shot around me and raped around me and slaughtered around me and, and burning buildings down around me, I'd still feel just like I do right now. I have a reward and that reward is peace and understanding and love and compassion for people so that I don't feel like doing all those things and taking things from people and being discontent and angry and full of racism, full of prejudices and biases I don't have any of that. I don't have any of it. So, but I see you write things and, it, and I think it's racist. Well, you're not understanding me if you think it's racist. Because I don't have a racist bone in my body. If I, 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 see, I hear you say things. I see videos and I... And if I'm speaking about something that is, that is damaging people... I'm not speaking about the people. I'm speaking about the system, the thought, and the, the creeds, and the dogma, and the principles, and the races, and the bias, and all those things that got them there. And how that you, as a people of understanding who know the seals are open, and you know you are to be a holistic being, and you know that you're supposed to have this understanding, and you know those things. I'm speaking to you as an angel in an angelic room. Walk out of the room different than how you entered it. Get rid of your wheelchairs. Get rid of your crutches. Get rid of your diseases. Get rid of your anger, your jealousy. Brother Branham, um, you know, what were those devils that was in Mary Magdalene? William Branham said, oh, I can name those devils to you. Anger, jealousy, envy, strife. Yeah, those are processes of carrying you through to something greater if you'll use your gap and if you'll use your reflexation. Use the information we have given you. I am, behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be so it's your choice and whatever your choices are whatever your work shall be you'll receive reward for that you'll receive the path of life your life for the things that you have allowed and walked in and accepted in your life you receive reward for that to give every man according to his works for I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I'm the one that started it all. I'm the one that finishes it all. I am Don Parnell. I am the Alpha and the Omega of my life. And I will receive according to my understanding and my holistic being, I will receive the rewards of of Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and I will begin things and end things in my life based on my revelation. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they might have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city. 
So we see ourselves entering into these things. There's no man on the inside of that room. You and the angel, you meet. It's you, your angel. When you enter the gap, when you enter that little angelic room, it's you. It's the road. It's the Jericho Road. On the Jericho Road, there's just you. And that road is from this little mind up here down to this little heart right here. That's a long road, and you travel that road yourself. You build that path yourself. In 1 Peter 2 and 7, you say, but I get so vexed. I feel so angry when I look at these things and how people are being treated. Which one do you want to be? Do you want to be Abraham or do you want to be Lot? You, your choices are there. Here, Lot, let's take a look at Aquarius a moment. You can go over here into these plains of Mamre. You can meet angels. You can enjoy your life. You can have a path of, of promises and of father of many nations and, and great love and compassion. And you can have the, the rewards of building nations. You and me building nations. You can have all of those rewards as you enter Aquarius. Take a look. Abraham, Lot, which one you want to be? Or you can have this over here. You can have the beauty. It looks like the Garden of Eden. It looks looks like the fun way to go. It looks like all this. And it's, uh, it's Sodom and Gomorrah. And Lot lifted up his eyes. And he looked at Sodom and Gomorrah. And he made a choice. Abraham didn't tell him to go that way. And I'm not telling you to go that way or this way. I'm saying, here we are. The voice, the gap is saying, look to the north, look to the south, look to the east, look to the west. Look all around. You have eyes within, you have eyes before, you have eyes behind. You have eyes to see, you have eyes to understand now. We've opened the understanding to you. Stand there now, take a good look around and lift your eyes up. Where do you want to go? Lot said, I'll go over here. I'll go over here into Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot became a lot of things in Sodom and Gomorrah. And 1 Peter 2 and 7 says that the angels, Lot was vexed, and these angels came in. Remember, there was there was angels that came to Abraham and angels that went down into Sodom. It became an angelic age. And these angels delivered just Lot. Lot was just. With all of that, he was still a just man. The, what you choose doesn't make you righteous or filthy. What you choose doesn't make you. It just puts you on the path of life and you will experience and receive the rewards of what you choose. Donald Trump is no more just or unjust than me. Putting them is no more filthy or righteous than me. You can go on and on and on. All of this is choices that we make as we move into Aquarius. And he says he delivered just Lot. Vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Conversation means a way of life. Lot chose a way of life that when he chose it, he was living in an atmosphere of filthiness, of wickedness of all those things. And it was just as much the land, it was just as much the promise, it was just as much all those things that he had all the way back there in Genesis 12 
when he left out with Abraham to begin with. And he had his sheep and he had his herds and he had his cattle and he had all these things. He's still the same guy, the just man. And when we enter the angelic age, those angelic atmosphere delivered just law. Vexed with the filthy conversation. For that righteous man dwelling among them, so here's Lot, he's righteous and he's filthy. We're looking at Revelation 22. He is living a life. He is a righteous man. That righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. All I can say is whether you do it or not, you're still the same person. You're still the same spirit. You're still the same being. But you have built an atmosphere of peace and reward or hell and rioting and discontent and anger and racism and bias. You, you build an atmosphere around you. And it says that even though he was a righteous man, he can be vexed. You too. You have that righteous attribute in you. And you have that thing in you, that iniquity, that wicked one in you, that you can be vexed with anger and jealousy and hatred and stemming from rules and regulations and laws and everything else. So we see this. He goes on and he says, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. That's right. And that's you and me. That's me alone. I have a part of me that I need to deal with and and wake myself up and come out of that vexation and I have a part of me that is just and real and true and I have this these parts but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government presumptuous are they self-willed they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities whereas angels angels which are greater in power that's you and me and it doesn't mean that we're a greater person we have just entered an atmosphere of greater consciousness greater power and greater understanding of who we are than what a vexed person is among all of these other things and so these angels which are greater in power listen to what they do they judge and destroy and punish and say you're going to hell no these angels which are greater in power you and me have come to an angelic understanding greater in power and might bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord <laughs> don't look out there and bring railing accusation because all of this is Christ but you, just like my little children when they were growing up, all the information has been put in front of you. You don't have to go that route. You don't have to go that vexation. You don't have to lift your eyes and go into Sodom and Gomorrah. You don't have to become vexed in the middle of all this beautiful understanding. Choose a different path in life. William Branham made this statement. I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. If you, if you know people that have chosen that path of let them that are filthy be filthy still, they're no less than you. They're, no, they're, no, uh, they're not lesser beings. They're not, they're, there's, a, there's a, I guess the best way to put it, there's a set of frequencies and it goes from high to low. They're all frequencies. Every single one of them. 
and based on the attributes that you're willing to open up inside of you, you're going to live in among these frequencies. And as a person of understanding, you want to try to live in the higher level of frequencies <clears throat> because that brings more love, compassion, and sympathy, and grace, and understanding. And these lower frequencies kind of brings out everything from anger to jealousy to the, but they're all they're all the same life they're all the same frequency they're all there and you make your choices which one to live in vibrations if somebody is in a vibration of anger and rioting and burning they're not different than you they're not they're still a person it's still a movement for Aquarius to take us where we want to go. But there's a large uh, filtration of vibration going on in the world. And you want to try to live in your personal life in the higher vibrations. Because in the higher vibration, it brings more peace. It brings, it brings the, the soothing music, the understanding, the peace, the... It brings the, the, the right tone, the right texture, the right... If you live in these lower frequencies, it's war, it's anger, it's fighting, it's, it's... But all of us, all of us are the same life and according to what attributes you, you open up inside you, you're going to live in some of that. You're going to live in all of it sometime in your life. You're going to experience it all. But you've got information now. You don't have to stay in those lower places. William Branham makes this statement. And then some time ago, I was in a vision. And I saw a large tent. I'm talking about this reflexation of the angelic room. Oh, it was, it was a mammoth tent big affair and I had just been speaking and many souls were at the altar and were just kind of weeping with their hands up quietly and softly a nice gentle spoke, spokesman came out to the platform and said now they will perform a prayer line while Brother Branham is making ready and I was standing that way, of course. The prayer line would be to my left. And I noticed a crowd of people that seemed to cover a city block or more that was standing in line. And there was a little building. So we're in a tent. And you know what tent that is. Isaiah talks about the tent. It's, it's us. It's living in humanity. It, humanity is the tent. And inside the tent, or inside the tent, uh, there was a little building, a wooden building inside that tent, a little room. And there was a woman standing there and a man, one taking names, identifying who you are, understanding who you are, knowing your nature, taking names. And people were going in on crutches and on stretchers and in wheelchairs. And coming out the other side, walking and well. I wonder. I wondered what all had taken place in there in that little room. And then the angel of the Lord, whose picture you see, the pillar of fire, whose picture you see, it went from me and went right over that little building and hung there, stood there. Then it went down into the building. And a voice spoke and said, I'll meet you in that place. Well, now, I have looked forward to that time. He talked about that time from the time he had that vision till the time he passed. In his very last message, he was talking about getting the tent, setting up a little room, going into a farmer's field or ball fields or wherever and doing this thing that he saw in a vision because that's the best he could make of it. 
it wasn't for the Piscean age. It was for an Aquarian age. It was to move into an angelic atmospheric age into the throne room, the little room. And well, now I've looked forward to that time. Well, I'm not looking forward to that time anymore. I'm not looking for a tent. I'm not looking for a ball field and a, or a farmer's field. And I'm not looking for a little wood to build a little building inside the tent and, and an angel fly into there. That's not what it's about. That's the best he could do in the 1950s and 60s. That's the best he could understand it. But today, we know the tent is humanity. And we know the little room is the heart of humanity, the Christ from whence comes all of these vibrations, from whence comes all of these frequencies. And if we can move into that little room and get ourselves into the angelic understanding, a holistic being, we will walk out the other side of that room whole and well and understanding full of peace, no disease, no crippledness, no crutches, no wheelchairs, no nothing, and we will be walking and standing on our own. But the thing is, enter that little angelic room. Enter that gap. Enter that voice. Enter into reflexation that says, you know, coming up through the Piscean age, there was a lot of things happened, but it left me crippled. It left me it left me discontent. It left me uh, uh, with a lot of feelings of bias and racism and everything else. And I need to get rid of these crutches. I need to get rid of these feelings, these rules and regulations. And these things that's causing me all of this discontent, I need to get rid of it. There's only one way to do it, and that is to leave William Branham, which the angel did, mm -hmm. and went over the little room, leave that whole thing behind you, and let the angel enter into your little room. William Branham said, I, he wasn't in that little room with you or with those people. He said, I wondered what went on in that little room. And I look forward to that time. Listen to me. When you leave all these messages and all these ages and all these messengers and, and all these gods and devils and everything else, when you leave it all behind you and enter that little room and let the angel speak with you and deal with you, your angel, your being, your person, and let it open up your consciousness and raise you into higher frequencies and greater vibrations, you'll walk out the other side. You won't be crippled. You won't be blind. You won't be sick. You won't be diseased. You'll walk out the other side with a holistic understanding. Listen to him talk about this little room for just a second. This, that, that message was lifting him up out of history. Because thou hast chosen the narrow path, the harder way, Thou hast walked of your own choosing. Now here, now this man, now watch how it's wrote. You can see it's wrote in foreign words. Thou hast picked the correct and precise decision. And it is my way. Bless God. It's my way. <laughs> Let me ask you this question. How many of you have taken the time to choose my way not Don Parnell's way if it's Connie Brooks choose my way she has a way I have a way I have chosen my way and it's the hard the hardest thing in this world is to be yourself to wake up to the consciousness of who you are and be yourself and don't go into those vexed things and into those crippled things and into those rules and regulations, but be yourself. You have made a precise decision. This is the angelic being talking to him and said, it is my way. You have an angelic being in you. Choose its way, your way. Bless God, it's my way, he said. Because of this momentous decision, because you made a decision to get rid of your gods and your devils and your writings and your 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 egos and your and and your inferiorities and superiorities, and because you chose 
this most mentis decision, a huge portion of heaven waits thee. It waits on you. This huge portion of heaven. Watch what he says. He said, because of this moment of decision, a huge portion of heaven awaits you. He had never heard about the vision, you see. This, he's talking about the man that gave him the prophecy. And he says, he had never heard of the vision about the tent, you see. You remember the vision? Huge portion of heaven awaits thee. What a glorious decision thou hast made, see. This in itself. Now here it is, from here on, I don't understand this in itself is that, which will give you and make come to pass a tremendous victory in love divine. Brother Random says, I don't understand that. That understanding hasn't come yet. How we're going to enter into a little room, how we're going to how we're going to become an angelic being and how we're going to lay away all of our crutches and everything else. I know how to do divine healing. I know how to, to heal people. I know how to set up tents and, and get people by the hundreds out of wheelchairs, but I don't understand how we can move into an angelic age, he says, and become a huge portion of heaven and make a decision to go my way. I don't know what it means. This will make come to pass. This will make come to pass. That love divine. Then he says, perhaps it's in that little tent one of these days. Sitting back yonder, I had the vision. He'll make it known at his time. The true Easter seal. Brother Branham telling us exactly what is going to happen and him saying I don't have an understanding about how we're going to become angelic I don't have an understanding of what goes on in that little room I don't know how to bring it to the people we're in a Piscean age and we still have so much rule regulation and hierarchy he says that I can't even get into a place. And he goes on talking and he says, I'm going to have to buy me a tent and set it up in a farmer's field somewhere just so I can have a meeting. He didn't know what was going to happen. He didn't know what to do. But now today we have chosen my way. Each one of you that's sitting here listening, you've chosen your way. And you have opened up a huge portion of heaven. You now understand that heaven is all of these things a holistic understanding and he says when this happens when this great portion of heaven opens perhaps it's that little tent one of these days he'll make it known and he has he's made it known to us we know who we are we know where the little tin is. It's humanity. We know where the little room in the tin is. It is the throne room, our heart, the understanding, Aquarius. And we know how to enter that little room. It is to let everything go, leave prophets, leave all these things behind. William Branham said, the angel left me and went into that little room become the angelic being and leave the Piscean age and leave all those things behind and enter into a new age, a new understanding into that little room. And there, listen to your gap. Listen to your reflexation. Listen to your voice speaking to you not about how to be better than America, not about how to be better than Russia or better than than Obama or Putin or Trump not about how to be uh, better than science none of those things listen to the little voice speak to you about reflexation and how to progress and become better in yourself become a higher consciousness a greater understanding of who you are 
And in so doing, you're putting out vibrations and you're going to walk out of that room and people are going to say, man, what happened in there? You've changed. Your attitude has changed. Your atmosphere has changed. All of those crutches that you were trying to give to me, you're not trying to give to me anymore. All of those rules and regulations, you've changed. The angelic room will change you. Zechariah, the third chapter. And he showed me Joshua. You know who Joshua is. It's Christ. It's the one that comes after all the laws and regulations. The one that comes after Moses. Zechariah 3 and 1. He showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. Hmm. So now we have a Piscean age, Christ in the high priest, a hierarchy, a Piscean age, standing before the Aquarian age, the angel of the Lord. I see a Piscean people and I see an angel of the Lord. Yeah. And Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. I see people wanting to go back into the Piscean age and resist everything about that angel of the Lord. I see a people that are over here and they want to be in the angelic room. They want to be in the angelic age. They want to be in the Aquarian age and they're resisting everything about the Piscean. That's what he's looking at here. Joshua under the priesthood standing before a new day a new age an angel and Satan the process you know what Satan is it's not a being it's not a person it's a process so I see a Piscean age people I see an Aquarian age people I see a high priest and I see an angel and I see a process to move from the high priest to the angel. I see a process. That process is the transformation that you and I have been going through for the last 50 some years. It's a transformation. And the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. So the spirit has brought on an atmosphere of choosing the new city, Jerusalem. And that's the path of the angel to take. And he's rebuking that whole, let's stay in hierarchy, let's stay in rules, let's stay in regulations. He rebukes that whole process and says, I don't want it anymore. And he says, I have chosen Jerusalem, I rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Come out of the Piscean age. Come out of all of these things. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. So here we are. 22nd chapter. A high priest, a Joshua, but filthy. Mm -hmm. Just and unjust. Righteous and unrighteous. Filthy steel, holy steel, unholy steel. It's a transition age. And we see the garments on so many things that are filthy. And we see the transition and we see the process of how to get out of those things. And what does he do? He said, now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. What do we do with these people? We're there. We're there. Joshua, high priest, hierarchy, all of these things, standing in filthy garments when we're looking at them, and stood before the angel. You are the angel. Every one of you listening to me right now, you are the angel. What do you do with the people? 
You're going to judge them. You're going to you're going to say they're filthy. They're no good. They're unrighteous. Let them burn in hell. Let them go through their punishment. Let them do this. Let them do that. It's their world. Let them go to it. I don't care. Uh uh. Let's watch the spirit that we as angels should have, because the angel was going to do something with Joshua. What are you going to do? And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thy iniquity to pass from thee. William Branham looked back down through the ages and said, She's perfect in every way. Oh, my Lord. 68 million slaughtered in arenas, raped, killed, all of these people down through the ages preaching Trinitarian doctrines, holding rape and murder and anger and jealousy and strife, bringing on Catholicism, Islam, and bringing on all these things. And here stands a prophet at the end of the age stepping into an angelic being, an angelic atmosphere, and he looks at all of it and he says, beautiful. Oh my, look at this. Look at all of its beauty. Look at everything that it come through. Look at its justification, its sanctification, its baptism of the Holy Ghost, the Word moving back into her. Look at all this beauty. It's the most beautiful picture. And you, you're shaking your head and saying, well, you know, most beautiful picture in all those ages with Mussolini and Stalin, Fernandez and Hitler and Roosevelt and, 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 and the... The Illuminati and the the <laughs> I could just go on and on and on. Beautiful picture. What are you talking about here? What a filthy age. But we have the power and the understanding and the holistic nature about us that we say, take away the filthy garments from him. He's perfect. They had all those things to create us. We are angels. They had all those things in their life to create us, to bring us to where we are. Oh, I, I hate that. I hate that slavery. I don't like slavery any better than you, but it was created to bring us where we are. I don't like any of it any of those ugly things out there any more than you but it's our place to remove the filthy garments and take a collective history and put it into a collective understanding and know that every one of those things that we wore how we acted the wars we went through all of the damaging things all of the things that we look at and say it was so horrid it was so ungodly it, all of those things made us and brought us into an angelic age. And I am not going to take away that history. I am going to embrace it. I am going to love it. I am going to hug you. I don't care if you're white, black, red, yellow. I don't care if you're a scientist or a politician. I don't care what you are. I am going to hug you and love you as a person. And I might tell you how off you are on your politics. And I might tell you how off you are on your, on your science and on your spirituality and on your religion. I might do that, but I'm going to hug you and love you as a person and hope that maybe I can give you enough information that you'll find a path that's easier for yourself. So don't get angry when I do those things. I'm doing it for you. Take the filthiness, the garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity. You don't have any iniquity. It's gone to pass. And I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. Can you do that? Can you bring them into your angelic atmosphere? Hmm? It shows us. Okay. It's back on? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, for some reason it went off there for just a moment. 
So we are at that angelic age. And can you do that? Can you bring the angelic age to where it needs to be? Can you bring... Yeah, it's still on. Can you bring all of these things to where it needs to be? Or are you wanting to keep the filthy garments on them? And I said, let them set a fair mitra upon his head. So they set a fair mitra upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. So for 50 years, while we were changing our garments and transitioning ourselves, for 50 years, the angel of the Lord stood by the whole time. He led us, he guided us, he kept us, and we've now entered the huge portion of heaven We've now entered that huge portion and we understand who we are and we have a fair metra upon our head. We are filled with the mind and the understanding and the revelation. So they set a fair metra upon his head and clothed him with garments and the angel of the Lord stood by and the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, if thou will walk in my ways. Isn't that something? How that's the exact words that William Branham said, this is my way. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, if thou will walk in my ways. Don Parnell, walk in my ways. And Alan Stuckless, walk in my ways. Your way. Understand your voice, your gap, your reflexation. Marion, walk in my way. Joe Gomez, walk in my way. And I'm not talking about Don Parnell's way. It's your way. If you will walk in my way, and if thou wilt keep my charge, listen to your person inside you, then thou shalt also judge my house, and shall also keep my courts, and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wandered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch, this thing that used to just be a man, that used to just be an oligarchy, all of a sudden it's going to spread out. I will bring forth a branch for behold the stone that I have laid before Joshua. Upon one stone shall be seven eyes. You'll catch the revelation of eyes before, eyes behind, eyes within. You will have these seven eyes. You will have this atmospheric understanding. You will have the four angels. You will control the four winds. You will have all of these things all around you these seven eyes behold I will engrave the gravings thereof saith the Lord of hosts and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day in one message a day is a message in one day I'll remove all of this and I will make your garments perfect I will make your walk perfect and I will make your people into a mighty branch and I will do all of these things. And I will remove the iniquity of your land in one day. I'm not bragging. But I'll just ask every one of you. What has this message done for you? You say, oh, but we didn't need this because we had William Branham's message. Well, that, a lot of good it did you. Yeah, we had William Branham's message for 50 years and now we got thousands of denominations, organizations, ideas, thoughts, and everything else on William Branham and his message and we're all fighting one another and you can't get in behind one pulpit or another. I don't even want behind any of them. I wouldn't. It, you, but you can't get there. 
if you walk in and you say anything about what this message, this message has done for you, they'll tell you to shut your mouth, keep it behind your teeth, or move on. They don't want you around. But what has this message done for you? Has it not given you a holistic understanding? Has it not brought you to a day to where all of your iniquity has been removed? You have no condemnation. You have no fear. You're not worried about what's going on in your life. It has done everything that it can do for you in the, in the way of the branch, in the way of Joshua cleaning up and becoming a holy thing. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall ye call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. It's a great day. It's a great understanding to see who we are, to understand who we are. Brother Stephen Adabal, he wrote something that fits right in with what we're talking about here. It's called Oneness versus Twinity. He said, I'm wondering about what your thought is about this concept. How many sowers are there in reality in the Matthew 13 parable? Let your answer reflect and align with Genesis 2. Because it's the same. Whatever sower was back there is up here in Matthew 13. How many planters or sowers do we have? I wrote this. In my thoughts, it's one sower. And two seeds. A seed is an attribute. Well, I don't know, but go to the message, God rich in mercy, and see if Brother Branham doesn't tell you a seed is an attribute for those of you that just got to have William Branham's word on it. <laughs> In my thoughts, it's one sower and two seeds or attributes. The wheat and the tare came from the same sower. The wheat manifests the attribute of a higher consciousness, a smoother, greater vibration. The wheat manifests the attribute of a higher consciousness, while the tear manifests the attribute of a lower consciousness or frequency in life. Doesn't mean they're a different life than you. They're the same life as you. But a tear and a wheat, and they need one another. You know, I, I, I grew up on a farm, and we used to have hillsides. And in my thinking, you know, clean off that hillside. And dad used to tell me, he said, leave that hillside alone. Let the weeds grow on it. He said, if you clean all the weeds off, you're going to have a big washout. He said, they, those weeds serve a purpose. It keeps from flooding and washing things out and making the farm look like a mess and be all damaged. Tears are just as much needed as the crops to keep everything in order. And they come from the same sower. The wheat manifests the attributes of a higher consciousness. The tear manifests the attributes of a lower consciousness. And they're both in you. Whether you know it or not. You live in both of those higher and lower frequencies. Like Cain and Abel. You see higher and lower frequencies. Like Shem and Ham, you see higher and lower frequencies. Like Nimrod and Abraham, Ishmael and Isaac, Esau and Jacob, Aaron and Moses, Judas and Jesus. It could just go on and on and on. One sower of two attributes so the holistic understanding of humanity can come into clear view on a farm you need both William Branham said we need to get on the farm 
we need to understand the farm. Mm -hmm. And everybody said, oh, I can't wait to get to that farm. Oh, it's going to be the most beautiful place. We're all going to be wheat. We're all going to be 20 years old. We're all going to love one another. We're all not, we're not going to be angry, hatred, and sex, and jealousy, and there's not going to be anything like that on this beautiful farm. But I find where a farm needs everything, yeah. it needs tares as much as it needs wheat. It needs goats as much as it needs sheep. It needs yeah, just on and on and on. You just keep naming it. We're on the farm now, but we have a holistic understanding that that goat is just as important as right, the sheep. Right. And the tare is just as important as the wheat. Mm -hmm. We're in the farm now. We're in the understanding now, aren't we? We entered the farm. The little wagon wheel. Hi, Daddy. <laughs> yeah, we entered. We're on the farm, sweating away. Brother Branham, what are we going to do over there? What are we going to do? Brother Random says, we're going to work. We're going to plant. We're going to sow. We're going to live. We're going to do all these things. And we're doing it on the farm with a holistic understanding of who we are. And I say, these wheats, one sower of two attributes. So the holistic understanding of humanity can come into clear view. The wheat, the tear is here the man child and the wicked one is here and i say that both of them are in us mm -hmm. working the understanding of let him that's righteous be righteous still and let him that's holy mm -hmm. be holy still and him that's filthy be filthy still we understand them with the maturity of the harvest don't go trying to pull everything up that you don't like. <laughs> it's showing there is. Try to come back on. Everything's on. Excuse me just a minute. I will see what's going on. Showing that it's streaming. Give me for just a moment. Try to pull everything off that you don't want. <coughs> it's like it's cutting in now. Okay. <coughs> I'll be back in just a moment. So we are, uh, I'm going to uh, see what's going on if I can. It seems like it's going on and off. Mm -hmm. Broadcast interruption. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's us. I think it's us. Yeah, it's something else going on. Yeah. So I will try and finish this up. We still have a recording. So then another brother, Brother Donnelly Reeves, makes this statement. My thoughts on this are, 
One is thoughts, the other is expression. It's like a graph with two lines. I'm going to turn this. Just see if that might not be it. One is thoughts, the other is expression. It's like a graph with two lines, horizontal and vertical, with the same source, zero. Talking man as unit sows both seeds. Mm -hmm. Call it frequencies and consciousness. WMB said all we need for our journey is in us now. Cain Abel, high low frequencies because we need them. So we're at that point in our life where we have highs and lows and we need to understand that it, we're on the farm Mm -hmm. Nothing is falling apart. Everything is exactly the way it's supposed to be. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this out because we're having all kinds of trouble, it looks like. So we love you. I hope this has been a help for you. And um, we will continue on this next week the understanding of what's going on, who we are, coming into this farm, coming into this Aquarius, mm -hmm. understanding all things. Love bless, stay in this frequency, mm -hmm. stay in this compassion, understand who you are. Come your way, my way, do the things that we are supposed to do. And the authority of Christ be healed, Understand who you are. Receive what you need now in this life. Amen.